Greetings. My name is Hollis Thomes. On Sunday, October 27th, Dakota Pro Musica, under the direction of Dr. Jason Thomes, will present a concert of presidential songs as we anticipate and celebrate the November 5th election. The concert will feature works that I have composed based on poetry written by presidents and works I have arranged based on presidential campaign songs. I collect rare books and many of my compositions resulted from reading these books. And I will share some of my books from my collection that have influenced my compositions. Alex Tocqueville in his Democracy in America, of which I have the first American translation of 1853, states that in America, a revolution is made every four years with the presidential elections. That changing of power from one administration to another brings about feelings of uncertainty and excitement, fear and hope. We measure our history by presidential administrations and we are poised to elect our 47th president. I've collected a number of rare books about and by our presidents and I have some favorite presidents. I have written a presidential song cycle that you will hear on the concert based on the poetry written by some of our favorite presidents. John Quincy Adams, our sixth president, was the last of the founding fathers. He was perhaps one of the most moral, experienced, and brilliant men ever to become president. He was the son of our second president, John Adams. He won a close election in 1824 over Andrew Jackson and had a vision for America that would have brought about many programs for the common good. The country, however, was expanding west and the influence of the founding fathers and the political power of the original 13 colonies were waning. A Tennessean and 1812 war hero, Andrew Jackson, eventually became the more popular choice in 1828. I have a memoirs of Andrew Jackson written in 1819. And here is an 1819 book with a portrait of Andrew Jackson. This is written as a campaign book when he ran for president. <clears throat> he became a mythological American war hero and president. Jackson's political influence lasted some 32 years until the presidency of Abraham Lincoln in 1860. John Quincy Adams, distraught by his loss to Jackson for a second term in 1828, turned to writing poetry. He published an epic poem on freedom and democracy entitled Dermot McMorrill. And I have here the third edition of 1834 of John Quincy Adams, The Conquest, Dermot McMorrow, The Conquest of Ireland, which is an epic poem that he wrote. He also wrote volumes of poetry, and here's one that was published in 1855, and he wrote and versified all 150 Psalms from the Bible and 22 of them were put into a hymn book, the Christian Psalter of 1841. And there are 22 of John Quincy Adams's versified psalm texts in here to be sung as hymns. And John Quincy Adams said the most important and most wonderful thing that ever happened to him in his life was not being president, but was hearing one of his psalm texts sung in church. I have set 10 of his psalm texts to music, and you will hear three of them in my, that opens up my presidential song cycle, Psalm 23, Psalm 130, and Psalm 103. There were only one-term presidents between Jackson and Lincoln. Three presidential candidates are of interest to me. One is Democrat Franklin Pierce, who won the presidency in 1852. 
The great American writer Nathaniel Hawthorne was a friend of Franklin Pierce and wrote a campaign book for him in 1852. And I have a copy of this. So this is written by Nathaniel Hawthorne, a great writer, and it is a campaign book for his friend, Franklin Pierce, who ran for president. A second presidential candidate of interest to me is John Fremont, a famous American explorer who became the first Republican nominee for president in 1856, but lost to James Buchanan in the election. He was a national hero, and I have a number of books about him, including a book and poetry entitled Signal Files by George Burla, used for the 1856 campaign describing Fremont as an almost messianic figure. So here is a book of poetry written about John Fremont, which uh, sets in almost epic poetry his whole entire life and all his famous explorer accomplishments. So this was used as a campaign book. It's a book of poetry. Third uh, is uh, of interest is a, a person who tried running for president three times, James Blaine, but was denied. He just lost to Grover Cleveland in 1884, but he also ran against Garfield in a primary, and he wrote a quite exquisite. History of the United States, and I have the two volumes here. A very learned man and a beautifully written history of the United States up to 1880. In my song cycle, I set two poems on death by Abraham Lincoln, our 16th president, and James Garfield, our 20th president. Both grew up in log cabins. Both were frontier strong. Both read books. Both were lawyers. Both were profound thinkers. Both are exceptional orators. Both were assassinated. Lincoln is remembered as our greatest president, serving five years. Garfield has been mostly forgotten, except by scholars, serving only six months before dying from an assassin's bullet. After Lincoln, Garfield is my favorite president. I have 30 or so books about Garfield and written by Garfield between 1880 and 1882. One biography of Garfield was written by Brisbane as a campaign book to introduce him as a dark horse candidate to the American public. You can see that right here. When Garfield was assassinated a year later, Brisbane's book was taken over by Balch, and the exact same text appears, except what's added is the assassination attempt on Garfield and his two months of suffering before dying. So you can see it's this, this book is the same as this, only it's been expanded to include the assassination. I have a number of books around uh, the 1880 election. Two of them are campaign books on General Hancock, who ran against Garfield and Hancock was the hero of the Gettysburg battle for the North, for the Union. But he kind of turned coat and went to the Democrats rather than the Republicans and ran against Lincoln, uh, ran against Garfield in the 1880 election. In my song cycle then I set two poems on death, one that Lincoln wrote and one that Garfield wrote. In my rare book collection, I also have some uh, campaign books uh, on Lincoln. And here, this is an interesting one right here because this was written for the 1860 election. And when no one knew very, that much about Lincoln, and here's a picture of Lincoln, but in the first two sentences, it gives the wrong birth date 
of Abraham Lincoln rather than 1809 if this 1808. So in some of these campaign books that were written very quickly, some of the information was not all that accurate. After two songs on death on poems by Lincoln and Garfield, I set three lighthearted vignettes gathered from the Letters to the Children by Theodore Roosevelt, our 26th president. Teddy Roosevelt was perhaps our most extraordinary president, an outdoorsman, naturalist, boxer, mythological war hero, writer, thinker, political phenomenon, and one of our great presidents. He has a wonderful, uh, he was a wonderful husband, father, and loved playing with his children. His letters to children provided many examples of his silliness, playfulness, and love. I have in my collection an incredible scrapbook of articles and photographs that I purchased from a bookseller. And this was put together in 1919, the year that Roosevelt died. And this man who collected this book was a devotee of President Roosevelt and he put together this wonderful scrapbook and you can see a picture of Teddy Roosevelt. And he followed him and had kept many of his articles and photographs. Finally, in my presidential song cycle, it ends with seven poems by Jimmy Carter, our 39th president, who is celebrating his 100th birthday this month. I have many of Carter's books and he wrote many after leaving the White House. My seven songs are based on poems from a book of poetry by Carter entitled Always a Reckoning. Here's that book. Carter has a quiet sense of humor, more of a wink and a broad smile rather than the raucous laughter of Teddy Roosevelt. Carter is not a great poet, but he has written some very poignant and funny poems. I have donated these seven songs on poems by Carter to the Carter Presidential Library, and they are in its collection. The second half of the program will be campaign songs. And these, will be song, these are songs that were sung by those people that were dedicated to a certain candidate. And I have here an original 1880 songbook for Garfield and Arthur my favorite president. So in the second half, you're going to hear eight songs from various campaigns, from John Quincy Adams, from Henry Harrison, from uh, Rutherford B. Hayes, from Garfield, and from Garfield. And so you'll have an ability to sing along on some of these campaign songs that were uh, promoting a presidential candidate. And most of these songbooks were written from 1840 to 1880 and used as kind of campaign messages advocating for their certain candidate. So I hope you come to our October 27th concert to hear my presidential song site based on poetry of presidents, John Quincy Adams, Abraham Lincoln, James Garfield, Teddy Roosevelt, and Jimmy Carter. And you were able to hear and sing along on presidential campaign Pain songs for John Quincy Adams, Henry Harrison, Abraham Lincoln, Rutherford B. Hayes, and my favorite president, James A. Garfield. I hope to see you there. <laughs>